I have been thinking a lot about identity and what it means to know who you are. I have always had it easy because from as far back as I can remember, I identify as an artist. When one takes on the responsibility of their art, they need to continue making it over the long haul while also putting a roof over the heads of this creative collaboration. During my third and final year at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, I studied with the late painter, Michael Goldberg. He used a vivid expression to describe this condition. You need to support your dirty habit. Rewind to an experience I had during the middle of my second year to emphasize that I already understood what he meant. Because I was a transfer student, I only needed to complete three years to earn my Bachelor of Fine Arts. In the middle of my second year, one of the guidance counselors tried to convince me to stay a fourth year. She gave me some ticky-tacky reasons to make it sound like the extra year would make me a better artist. But I was savvy enough to understand that what the institution wanted was another year of tuition payments from my maternal grandmother, Jean Minky Moretti. I need to digress right here. Before Minky developed Alzheimer's disease, she clarified that she was putting me through art school. Hence, the reason I use my first and middle names versus only my first name. It is my way of paying homage to her. Now back to our scheduled program. So after the guidance counselor finished her spiel, I told her I need not stay any longer and the essentials are to get out into the ill-famed real world, set up a studio space, and continue working. Then I added, I know the change from art school to you're on your own will not be a walk in the park. I need to get it over with so I can move on. Minky passed away on January 20th, 1988, and my brother lived in her house until mom sold it a few years later. After graduating in May of that year, mom said I could transform a small portion of Minky's finished basement into my first studio. Although I was making art, I was not listening to the work's voice. Let me clarify what I mean using another lesson I learned during my last year at the School of Visual Arts. One afternoon before class, the sculptor Jackie Windsor walked into my studio, sat down, and looked around at the large-scale portraits of human faces I was painting. She looked into my person and said, You are holding something back by doing these portraits. You are a volcano about to erupt. Although I knew what she meant, I wasn't strong enough to set the work free. Now that I revealed the backstory, I must open up about the one time I lost sight of my identity. It was early in my custom picture framing career, late 1988 or early 1989. I was helping one of my colleagues in the gallery attached to the Art Barnes framing department. As I looked away from our project to get a tool 
I noticed a young man in the gallery. As soon as I got a better look at him, I realized he graduated a year ahead of me in high school. Although I had fond memories of him, I did not want him to see me working in the frame shop because at that moment in time, I identified myself as a failure. But if I could have stepped out of myself and looked at my life from far away, I would have seen that I was doing what I wanted to do, with one exception. I needed to set the lava free so it can flow in the uncertain directions dictated by the natural irregularities engraved into the earth's terrain. It took me an additional three years to muster up the courage to liberate the work and let it develop on its own. Have I ever relapsed and tried to dig my own ruts into the earth and direct the lava? I wouldn't dare because I am having too much fun riding the waves. <laughs>